So, we are going to look at uh, uh, models of electrical WO. Okay. So, I am going to start with the uh, a simplest model, uh, it is what is called as um, Helmholtz model. Okay. This is one of the, the first models that was put forward. Uh, and uh, so, in this case, what is uh, 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 you know thought of, of is the the counter ions. Okay, they are directly bound to the to the surface of the. So, if what, what you're looking at is a picture where you have a a solid surface. Okay, it could be you can think about it as a part of a spherical particle. So, I could you know look at a spherical particle. I'm only looking at a a small portion, right? That's a solid surface. Okay, that's a particle of interest. It could be. Okay, and uh, these are the the charges on the particle surface. Uh, these are the uh, counter ions, right? Okay, so in this uh, Helmholtz model, what is assumed is that the counter ions are directly bound. Okay, they are directly bound or attached, you know, to the the particle surface, and they neutralize the charges on the surface. Okay, they neutralize the charges on the surface, giving an arrangement which looks more like a capacitor. Okay, so, capacitor you know you have you can think about two plates right, okay, okay, which are you know oppositely charged. Okay, so, that is a capacitor like arrangement right. So, so in this particular uh, double layer model, it is assumed that the counter ions directly bound to the surface and then they neutralize the surface charge and give you some kind of a arrangement which look like, looks like a capacitor. Okay. Um, yeah, this point we will come back to it later. Okay. So, what is mentioned here is the electric field generated by the, the surface charges in such a system is limited to the thickness of a molecular layer that I will come to this particular point a little later. So, what is shown here is a two arrangement okay, um, like a capacitor like arrangement. So, I have a, a charge plate. Okay. So, this could be the char you know the plate that is because of the, the counter ions right in the solution and that is the charges you can think about this as a uh, the charges that arise because of the, um, uh, the, the particle surface. Okay. And in in case A, you have vacuum between the two particles. In case B, you have some medium, okay, which will be the the case if you look at you know colloidal particles in solution, you'll always have some medium right between the two layers, okay. And uh, in um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use a concept called line line of forces, okay, which you will you would have seen in electrostatics right so you say that you know if i have a charged plate okay uh, say that, you know some uh, you know there's a positive and negative charges on the surface right you talk about you know the you know uh, the lines of force that start from a negative charge and they go to the the positive charge and you know they can you know they can continue right right so we're going to use a concept like that right so the lines of force that start from one charge surface okay they start from one charge surface and they terminate at the other charge surface okay and if you assume that the particles i mean the surfaces have a, a area a suppose that the plates are of area a and if the total charges that each of these plates carry is q then we can define a quantity called the surface charge density okay which essentially is the charge per unit area right I, ca I can define that so this is this is the the surface charge density sigma star which is the total charge divided by the area of the uh, plates right now what you can do is that so since a line of force okay is associated with each unit charge okay for every charge that you have there is going to be a, a line of force. Okay. So, because you have a charge density q by a okay, I can say that there are q by a lines of forces that cross from 
one you know the charge plate to the other charge plate ok. Um, and therefore, you can say that this E naught that is the electric field ok that is arising because of you know Q by A lines of forces is Q by A divided by 1 over epsilon right. So, that is in a way this tells you what is the force see this is this is Q by A is the 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 number of lines of forces ok and the electric field generated is proportional to the number of lines of forces and of course, you know you have you know to take care of the effect of the medium between the two plates. In one case the medium between the two plates is ep vacuum therefore, you have 1 over epsilon naught. In the second case when you have a medium dielectric medium present you know this factor you are going to replace that with 1 over epsilon naught into epsilon r ok. So, in essence this epsilon r and epsilon naught uh, tell you something about what is the electric field that is generated because of the two arrangements which are which are shown here ok. Um, <coughs> So, if you look at this expression right this is very similar to what we what I was mentioning about. Uh, so, we had mentioned that uh, um, so in a way ok we will come back to that point ok. Now, so now I would have to relate uh, this is the electric field ok. Um, you will see that in in colloids literature when people work with um, uh, charged particles ok, uh, you will always see that um, um, say it turns out that you know uh, for uh, getting working equations uh, um, for like say the the interaction potential for example, phi you know electrical double layer interaction you will see that you know the uh, such uh, uh, the expressions that deal you know that, that concern electrical double layer interactions they are always represented you know in terms of the uh, surface potential ok. Y you, you know you do not see the, the charges directly in the expression, but you will see that you know all the equations have the psi which is what is called as a electric potential ok. And that electric potential is related to the electric field that is gen that is generated because of the the charges ok and which in turn is related to the charges that are associated with the particles ok. <coughs> and this electric field E is given as negative gradient of the electric potential ok. So, therefore, what I can do is um, if I assume that uh, the, the, the drop in the potential is very very small I can replace d psi by delta psi and this d x is the, the distance over which the potential is you know the, the distance over which the potential is changing and this delta ok that is a, a distance between the, the capacitor plates ok and that will be equal to sigma star divided by epsilon naught into epsilon naught that is for the case where you have a medium of you know epsilon is a dielectric constant of the medium between the two plates ok. <coughs> now, to show that so now I will come back to this point right we had mentioned that the electric field generated by the surface charges is accordingly limited to the thickness of a, a molecular layer ok. Uh, just to make that point what I am going to do is to calculate few. So, this is in essence what is the capacitor model ok. So, if you have uh, you know uh, you could have a, a positively charged plate for example, and uh, negatively this is the charges on the particle surface ok and this could be the charges in the counter ions right that is that these are the ions which are tightly bound to the, the charge surface ok and that is the distance delta ok and this psi b minus psi alpha is the the potential drop ok 
and you can do some simple calculation. Uh, I have taken a case where you have a, so let us think about a simple case where I have a, a charge surface and imagine that you know this is a, a charge surface which is because of a, a surfactant molecules okay, which are attached to the particle surface. Okay. Now, if the the charged monolayer, so I am talking about monolayer because I have a single layer of surfactant attached to the particle surface. If the charged monolayer has an area which is 10 nanometer square, okay, a charged monolayer of area 10 nanometer square is what I am considering. Now, if you okay for a monovalent ion, this corresponds to a charge density. So, what you can do is say that you know I have a 10 nanometer square area and and I have one ion per 10 nanometer square. Okay. If I have one ion, the charges on the ion is going to be 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs per ion. Okay. Therefore, I can get a, a charge density. Right. So, you should imagine that you know I have a monolayer of surfactant okay. and if I say that there is one ion for every 10 nanometer square area. Okay. For every 10 nanometer square there is one ion present then the charge density is going to be one ion per 10 nanometer square. Therefore, this number becomes 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs divided by you know per ion right that is a charge per ion. Right. So, therefore, you get a sigma star which is 1.6 into 10 power minus 2 coulomb meter square coulomb per meter square right. And you calculate epsilon uh, you know electric field okay. uh, that is sigma star right we go back here sigma star. So, I plugged in sigma star here okay, 1.6 you know 10 power minus 2 coulomb meter square and epsilon naught right that is your epsilon naught and that is epsilon r. Okay, therefore, your epsilon you know E epsilon becomes 2.26 into 10 power 7 volts per meter right. And typically when people talk about you know uh, charged um, surfaces uh, typical potential drop you know are of the order of 0 0.1 volts okay. Okay, or 100 millivolts. Okay, that's a typical potential drop people talk about. So if I substitute for you know delta del epsilon, okay, or the change in the, the drop in the potential, I can get delta, and the delta comes out to be 4.4 nanometer. Okay, so therefore you can say that you know because we are assuming that the counter ions are directly bound to the the particle surface and typical the thickness of the double layer one, one can think about is of the order of 4.4 nanometer okay, in this particular example. Okay. Therefore, um, in the capacitor model we should assume that the electrostatic interactions. Okay. So, in, in, a, in, in a way this tells you something about the range of distance over which the electrostatic interactions are operative. Right. Can I, can I make the statement? This, so what we are saying is that if you look at uh, this particular picture, right? That's a charged. Okay, that's a charged surface. Okay, and we are saying that you know the surface charges are bound to the the counter ions are bound to the particle surface. They are strongly bound in essence essentially neutralizing the entire surface okay and because of the fact that they are strongly bound you know we can imagine that the the electric field that is generated by the surface charges is would be of the order of molecular uh, layer thick that's what we kind of proved by looking at some typical numbers uh, of uh, the delta that we get for a particular uh, case okay 
So maybe just go back and take a look at this again. Maybe we'll discuss this example uh, um, again in the next class. Okay. Um, so the first uh, simple picture that you looked at is Hel Helmholtz um, <coughs> the, uh, <coughs> model, but <coughs> the more realistic picture is that is that the such a strong binding that is you know kind of assumed in the electrical in the Helmholtz model is actually not not completely true. Okay, that is because the the counter ions that are, that, that are there in solution they are also free to move around right they you know they also have uh, you know thermal energy right k t and because of this thermal energy they can also you know go away from the surface okay and then you know you get a kind of a distribution which is not exactly you know like a capacitor arrangement of course there is going to be a, a larger concentration of counter ions close to the surface but the arrangement is not exactly like a, a capacitor uh, you know kind of a concept okay we'll try and talk about it in the next class